Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. They, they're looking at Yemen as an Iranian problem, and the only way they get dragged in is if the pro-Israeli lobbying uh, machine pushes them to attack Yemen because of their blockades with the uh, Gulf of Aden. But as we mentioned before, these folks are trying to build a highway but, uh, that goes through India, through Saudi Arabia, through Israel, which is why these Gulf countries... They want to normalize relations with Israel because it's economically viable and it will force Israel to, if they want to do business with, with these with these Gulf countries, they'll force them to calm down. They'll force them to behave. But again, you're talking about a people who don't have a word that they keep anyways, but Allah knows best, right? You got you to gotta understand like the issue between Saudi Arabia and Palestine, again, it's a, it's a complicated one as well. Because King Faisal, rahimahullah, he did a lot for the Palestinian cause. He caused a global economic uh, emergency with the OPEC embargo against uh, every country that supported Israel against the Palestinians. And he was assassinated for his efforts. Ever since he was assassinated, whenever something goes wrong with Palestinians from the Israelis, the first people who get blamed, who is it? Somebody put it in the chat, please. Whenever something goes wrong with the Palestinians, who are the first people that the Muslims call out? Somebody put it in the chat, please. Let me know we're not tripping. Who are the first people, all these Muslims, they get mad at? Especially now with the, with the advent of social media. But it really hasn't changed even since I became first became Muslim. You know, they, they've been calling out the same people over and over and over again. Thank you. It's Saudi. Even though arguably the Saudis have done more for the Palestinians than any other group, you know? But they still get blamed when something goes wrong with the Palestinians. Mind you, King Faisal was assassinated for helping the Saudis. He was assassinated, okay? And not only that, you will find that the general Muslims, they blame everything that goes on in Palestine on the Saudis, which is one of the weirdest, <laughs> I guess it's just weird. It's just weird. Do you know how many uh, people of Palestinian descent are living in Saudi right now? When I was in Saudi, there's all, all kinds of people of Palestinian descent from Jordan, from, uh, Lebanon, because, you know, you can't get a Palestinian, there's no such thing as a Palestinian passport. So they, the Palestinians, they will go to these other countries like Lebanon, Jordan, whatever, and they end up in Saudi, you know? So really the Gulf countries, they're kind of tired of this, this situation. They're really tired of it because whenever something goes wrong in, you know, Palestine, they're the ones that get blamed. And as I said, they're, they arguably do more than anybody else. Definitely more than the Egyptians. Definitely more than Egyptians. Like more than, the, than uh, even the people in Sham, but... That's neither here nor there. They they want this thing to end. They are getting their weapons from the United States, Saudi, Egypt, all these all these Arab countries. They get their wep weaponry from the United States. The only one that's really armed from Russia is probably Iran. You get it? But Iran again. That's the reason why they have these anemic responses between Iran and Israel is because of that secret relationship they've been having since the 80s. They actually help each other. They're not hurting each other, they help each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they're out there pretending that they, they hurt each other for political expediency, you know what I mean? But anyways, family, again, the short of it is, is that, again, Donald Trump nor any U.S. president is interested in attacking Yemen. They already, if they want to do that, they would just get the Saudis to do it. Why Why would you send your own troops to Yemen? Right, on the ground, you know what I mean? The most that they would do is probably, you know, bomb some bunkers or whatnot from the sea, right? But that, in terms of all out war, no, that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. And they, they can't do it anyways, because they're, the empire is in full decline. So when the empire is in full decline, you gotta expect civil war. We fully expect Donald Trump to be the next president, whether through election, and even if he loses the election, what he will do is that he will fight it in the courts and he'll probably win in the courts. Because as we mentioned yesterday, that the thing that was missing was the appellate courts, which he now has because of Roe versus Wade. So the appellate courts will rig the election in his favor for sure right they'll be willing to do that and then the election rules will completely change a lot of folks would be uh, disenfranchised from voting specifically black people anybody who's hispanic will probably not be allowed to vote all right after after this election and if kamala harris wins like wins wins then you're going to see uh my humble opinion you probably see 
some war or some sort of uh, social upheaval. And if there is no social upheaval, after, if Kamala Harris wins, it will be on, uh, instigated from outside forces like BRICS, who will send, as we mentioned before, they're going to end up sending trillions of dollars, US dollars, back to the States, which will call, cause a whole economic collapse. It will cause a whole economic collapse. Y'all, we're going to be spending $100, $200, $300 on a loaf of bread. Paper gold. You see, black folks are chumps. If America were to tell you to bring all the rocks in this country to her, and she'll give you a million dollars for it, you'll do it. And the next day she'll tell you we're using rocks for currencies, chump.